right, we looked at many such uh, thing. So, so I am going to look at a, a specific uh, setting now uh, which essentially uh, looks at um, you know how do you do clustering right when I do not really give you the data points right but I give you a similarity matrix between them right. So, I do not give you the data points right but I tell you that okay here are the Right, similarity like similarity matrix between the data points. So, this is like say point 0.8 similar right, so what are the things I can fill in now. trying to give you something consistent so I'm just cooking this numbers up on the fly I cannot cook everything up on the fly can I. Something like this. Right, so I'll give you a matrix like this. Okay, can you do clustering? <coughs> Sorry. What's the similarity? similarity is the inverse of distance. Right, or I can of course take the inverse of this and give you the distance between the points as well. Right, so I give you a similarity matrix. Right, so the reason I'm stating this is <coughs> sometimes it makes it really convenient to reduce the data that is given to you, and even if I give you, let's say, I give you a huge a collection of documents right. So, instead of computing the distance between every uh, document again and again when you are doing clustering right I can just basically do a n cross n I can construct a n cross n matrix like this right. In fact, I am assuming distance is symmetric right I am assuming the distance is symmetric. So, it is not really n cross n it is only half of that right and uh, so you can construct this matrix you can keep this with you and then you can do clustering based on this right. Suppose I want to do something like k means right how will you work how will it work in this case. A little tricky right if you want to do k means it is a little tricky right. Sorry. You can plot it in some state. Yeah, but then the first you have to find an embedding right. So, it is not uh, so that is a that is called an embedding into a, a space right. First you have to find the embedding a b the embedding might not be sufficient right I mean it not be sufficiently accurate you have to first figure out what dimensional space you are going to do this embedding in this is 2D, 3D, 4D and finding the embedding itself is a hard problem right and then you want to do clustering on top of that right. So, you are going to actually solve a harder problem before you are going to solve clustering. So, you do not want to do the embedding right. So, there are some other mechanism which you can do this right. So, one way to think about give data, um, data like that is to think of it as a graph right think of it as a graph and think of it as this some kind of a weights between the nodes right. So, I have how many nodes I have 5 nodes right. So, I have 5 nodes right. So, I give, will give them numbers right. So, 1 to 2 okay the weight is 0 0.8 that right. is a complete graph by the way in the beginning then 1 to 3 right the weight is the 
everything else. So, 2 to 3 and become more and more. What does this point 0.5 belong to now? I am confused. Five is okay. <coughs> really, I mean, you can make out the weights now, right? So, uh, so that's 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 a graph, right? And I want to look at a partitional clustering on this graph, right? So what I can do is I can solve what is known as a min cut problem on the graph right so what is a min cut a cut on a graph is a set of you can do two two things you can either cut on the edges you can cut on the vertices we will worry about cutting on the edges a cut cut set of edges on a graph is a set of edges such that if i remove the edges in the cut set the graph gets split into two components right so i take a connected graph i remove a set of edges from the graph okay and the graph becomes two separate components okay so that is called a cut set right and a min cut is a set that has the least weight right in an unweighted graph it is a set that has the fewest edges right in the weighted graph it is a set that has the least weight right it could have more edges but if all the weight edges could have less weight then that becomes a min cut okay so you could try and do a min cut on this graph Right. So, that is one way of solving it and uh, so in the next clustering class that we will have which will be like uh, uh, not next week the week after right the next clustering class we will have I will talk about spectral approaches to clustering right which essentially talks about different ways of solving this min cut problem right it talks about a completely different way of solving the min cut problem. So, we will look at spectral clustering later right there are a couple of other things that you can do right. So, especially uh, all of you have done graph theory some point you must have done graph theory all of you have done some graph theory basic graph theory data structures in, in okay people understand what I mean by a minimum spanning tree everyone understands what a minimum spanning tree is so what is a minimum spanning tree huh? a it's a tree okay b it spans all the vertices it connects all the vertices and 3 it has the least weight among all those trees that connects all the vertices right these are the three things right so minimum spanning tree you can just basically take each term and define it and you get the thing so so in this case if you can think of a minimum spanning tree what would it be i am making people run the extra or something now come on crystal prim what do you want to run Skill. Okay, give me a minimum spanning tree now. right so that is a minimum spanning tree so I started off by inserting the edges with 0.2 right and then I looked at things that were outside and figured out which is the least cost edge so both of these had the same cost okay. so now I have a minimum spanning tree now I can once I have the minimum spanning tree I can use this to produce clusters. I can start off by saying in this case it is pretty trivial I can start off by saying remove the highest weighted edge in the spanning tree 
remove the highest weighted edge in the spanning tree right or should it be the lowest weight we are doing similarities right we are doing similar okay remove the lowest weighted edge in the spanning tree now I could do this either way right if I had had distances instead of similarities also I could do this right remove the lowest weighted edge no no wait 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 no I think I have to do the other way around I am doing similarities right so I should do a max spanning tree right not a min spanning tree which is easy is it easy to do a max spanning tree is it the same complexity as a min spanning tree Okay. okay, now tell me what is the max spanning tree here. Five and six is point two. Uh, five and four. Right or what is it? Yeah, okay. I mean if you want to do it that way, sure. Then five to three is another point four, is it? Five to three is a point four, is it? Five to three is a point two. Five to three is a point two. So five to four is a point three. What is two to four? Is that point? Huh? Two to four. 2 to 4 is a 0.5, 2 to 4 is a 0.5, yeah that is that could work, yeah so that is a 0.5, okay right. So now what I do is I remove a, an edge that has got the least weight, right. So I will remove this guy, so I am left with 2 clusters, right. So if I remove an edge from a tree, it becomes disconnected, right. So, I get the max spanning tree in this case, I remove the edge with the least cost, right. So, I can I can think of doing clustering by doing it this way, right. Instead of if I had been given distances instead of uh, similarity, I would have done the minimum spanning tree, right, and removed the edge with the max cost, right. Now, I did the max spanning tree and removed the edge with the min cost to give me two clusters. If I wanted to do work with distances instead of similarity, I will do the minimum spanning tree and remove the edge with the max cost, right. Okay, this gives me two clusters, suppose I want three clusters, what do I do? Remove another edge, so now the two, three clusters will be 1, 2, 5 will be one cluster and 3 will be one cluster by itself, 4 will be another cluster by itself, right. So I do not really need to do the embedding, right, I can treat it as a graph, right and I can still do useful clustering with this, right. So one thing is to do the min cuts which we will come back to later, other one is to just first do the minimum or maximum spanning tree right depending on what data you are given and then do this okay, cool. Uh, I am going to look at something else, I will erase that. So, yeah. so if there are multiple uh, graphs that are possible at each stage where we are increasing the number of clusters then. Uh, okay. So that is a good question. So take your pick you know. So you have to use some other heuristic even here also there was two possible choices for my first stage itself right I could have when I wanted to cut a 0.5 that I could have either cut the one between 3 and 4 or the one between 2 and 4 right I chose to cut the one between 2 and 4 because it gave me more or less equal size clusters that could be a heuristic you use right. So you can just say that okay if I cut this 0.5 I get an isolated node and all the other nodes are in one cluster if I cut the other 0.5 I get two nodes 2 and 3. So maybe that is a better division, so you can use additional heuristics like this, so there are multiple things that are possible. In fact, it is even more complex than that, there could be minimal, uh, many minimum spanning trees possible. So I just showed you one tree, right, luckily it turns out that this particular graph there is only one minimum uh, maximum spanning tree, there could be minimum, many maximum spanning trees possible, what do you do in that case? Uh, you could or you just pick one, that is it just pick one and then go ahead and do the clustering it's like uh, like uh, there is no single answer for this you remember me telling you clustering is a ill defined problem yeah so yeah so there is no single answer for this right there could be multiple different answers but let's look at something a little bit more interesting 
okay. So I am going to introduce you to this concept called threshold graphs, right. So I have graphs like this, what is the maximum similarity I can have? 1, right. I will start off by saying I will connect all the nodes in the graph, okay, such that their similarity is 1 or greater than 1, okay. So I will basically end up with that is my graph, right. So it is essentially the empty edge set, right. Now I will say that, okay, great, I have this graph and I am going to treat all the connected components in this graph as a cluster. All the connected components in this graph I will treat as a cluster. So what do I get? 5 clusters. So remains you have something? Hierarchical clustering. This is how we start off in the hierarchical clustering, right. So I will say that I will start off with each data point as being a cluster of its own, right. Now what I do? Okay. I will start decreasing my threshold, right. So what is the first step that I can do? I will make my threshold 0.8. Now I will do all my connected components, right, I will take them as clusters. So how many clusters I have? Four clusters, one and two are right. Next what is the best, I oh, am sorry, point 0.8. Next I say point 0.7, right. That is my graph, point 0.7 that is my graph. So what does it do? Uh, So I change the labels here if people are wondering what happened, okay. So and then what is the next level I can do? 0 0.6 is it? And okay, what is 0 0.6? Is 1, 2, 2 and 5 is 0 0.6, okay. Huh? Sorry? Does not matter, it is still connected, right? So nothing changes, I, I do not introduce any new connected components, it is the same set, okay, no, no new clusters have been found, right. Then I go to 0 0.5, so what happens with 0.5, I get that, anything else, it is a little tricky, so 2 and 4 as well, right. So what happens now, essentially everything is a cluster, right. So So everything has been merged, I just stop here, okay. So this is my dendrogram, okay, correct. So now I have done hierarchical clustering by using just simple graph theoretic concepts. What did I do? I just kept taking thresholded graphs and I looked at connected components in that graph and I got a hierarchical clusters, right. So what is it equal to? Any one of those things I have written down there? Is it equivalent to any one of those uh, distance measures I wrote down there? Single link. How many of you think it is single link? One. How many of you think half? Ah, five. Thank you. How many of you think it is complete link? Okay. 1, how many of you think it is average link, 1 and a half, <laughs> so I am taking the average, when somebody put their hand up like this, somebody put did this, right, so anyway, uh, single link, right, so the majority <laughs> vote was for single link, 5 versus 1 versus 1 and a half, 
right. So, if, so it is single link clustering, right. So, if you think about it, right, so what is the distance between the cluster 1, 2, 5 and the cluster 3, 4? Things that are closest, right, the pair of points that are closest, so between 4 and 2. So, that is essentially the distance I am using. Right. When I have the distances 4 and 2, this edge appears in right, and then it becomes connected. Right. That means that the closest points, right, these are the most similar. So, similar, most similar means closest, distance is smallest. Right. So, they appear in and therefore, this is a single link clustering, it is equivalent to exactly equivalent to single link clustering. Okay. Is it fine? So, can I erase that and I want to do this again. except that I will change the definition of cluster. Okay. Threshold graph, I will start off with this right? and I will take all the cliques in this graph as a cluster. Right? So, what are the maximal cliques in this graph? All of them, right? Each one of them. So that is that doesn't change. So the same thing. So I start off with start off with five clusters. Right? Then I do the threshold. Right? So the first first edge that appears will be this guy. Right? Now what are the maximal cliques in this graph? 1, 2, right? Everything else is all by themselves. So, again, I get that I merge this and the level is 0 0.8. Great. Right. Now, I do the 0 0.7 level, right? 0 0.7, what do I get? I get that, okay? So, what are the maximal cliques in this graph? It is 1, 2, and 1, 5, but we already inserted 1, 2 as a cluster. So, since we are not allowing overlapping clusters or anything here, we are thinking of partitions here, right? So, 5 will still be left alone, right. So, I, I have two possible cluster, uh, cliques here 1, 2 or 1, 5, right. But since I do not uh, consider uh, uh, overlapping clusters, I cannot assign 1 to 2 clusters, so I just leave it like that. So, at the 0 0.7 level, I do not do anything here, right. So, 0.9 we do not do anything, 0 0.7 also I do not do anything, okay. Next, what do I do? I go to 0 0.6, which is what? 2, 5. Hey, okay. Now, what are the maximal cliques here? 1, 2, 5, right? So, so earlier at the 0 0.6 level, nothing happened. This cluster got formed at the 0 0.7 level itself. Here, you have to go down to 0 0.6 before the cluster gets formed, okay. Next, what we do? Reduce it to 0 0.5. I do not need to put the right, right. So, right, 0 0.5, this is what I get. So, there is a new clique that is formed, right, 3, 4, right. This is what? This is 0 0.5, right. There is a new clique that gets formed at 0 0.5. Then, what do I do? 0 0.4. There is a point 0.4 which is what 1 and 4, okay. Does it change anything? No, right. I do not want to, I do not want to disturb any of the cliques that has already been formed unless a new clique is forming, right. I do not want to break this and put it there or anything, right. So, I will leave it like that. Then I go to point 0.3. What is point 0.3? 1 and 3, is it? 1 and 3, 4 and 5, what about uh, 3 and 5? No. What about 2 and 3? No. Right. So, at point 3 nothing happens, but then I go to point 2. Ha! Now, I finally have everything down, right. Then basically Point 0.3, point 0.4, nothing happens. At point 0.2, I get the final merging. Okay. 
is it fine so there are two ways in which i can do this i can just think of connected components or i can also think of cliques right and so what is the difference here if i choose to cut remember i was telling you you can cut the tree at some point and retrieve your clusters right so now i can set myself a threshold okay i want to cut the tree such that the similarity between the data points in a cluster is at least 0.5 right so then what do i do so i cut the tree just below that right right there and here i'll cut it just here right ouch or in this case it turns out to be the same sorry yeah so i said at least 0.5 right so okay 0.5 is a bad idea let's let's take let's take point 6 right i want at least 0.6 so what happens is uh, right so i'll cut it off here just below 0.6 right i want at least 0.6 means i want it to be at least 0.600001 right so i don't want it to be exactly 0.6 i want it to be slightly more than 0.6 i cut it just below 0.6 level here so what do i get i get 1 2 as a cluster 5 as a cluster 4 as a cluster 3 as a cluster But if you do the same thing here, just below 0.6, right? I get 1, 2, 5 as a cluster, 4 and 3 as a cluster. So depending on how I did the clustering and how I build the dendrogram, right? Given the same tolerance level, might yield different clusters for me, right? So is this does this tie up with any of the clustering technique that we already saw? It's complete link. Right? Why is it complete link? So I consider two clusters as having merged only if all points are connected. That means even the specifically the farthest most points also should get connected, right? So the level at which I'll merge the cluster now is be will be the level at which the two the farthest points lie, right? So that's essentially this is complete link. So this is single link. Make sense? Okay. So, so you can always think of uh, your uh, the data points as, uh, lying on a graph, and you can do all of these things. What is the nice thing about data points lying on a graph? I can visualize them. Aha! Uh -huh. It's two D. That's interesting. Are all graphs visualizable in two D? No, only on that. Yeah. So they have a name for it. They're called planar graphs. I mean, you can still visualize other kinds of graphs. It's just that they'll have all kinds of crisscrossing lines, right? So, and so it becomes a little harder to visualize, right? But yeah, huh? This this is planar, complete graph. Okay, it's not planar. I don't think. Huh? The dendrogram can be. Yeah, dendrogram can visualize anyway. Come on, it doesn't have to be a graph, right? You can visualize the dendrogram given any point. There's something even more important. Right, when I start embedding them in some space and start giving you a distance measure, uh, it basically has to follow certain properties of that space, right? Typically, you end up wanting the distances to follow some kind of a metric, right? When I start putting them in a graph, right? They are basically arbitrary numbers I can fill in there, right? So I don't, I can have some similarity measure which is not even a metric, right? I don't have to worry about whether it makes sense, whether triangle inequality is followed or anything. I can just take, I can assign arbitrary similarities to data points. Okay, and then I can say do clustering. Okay, there might be applications where you need this kind of a power. Okay, so that is the uh, nice advantage of thinking about this as graphs, right? So once you have this as graphs, then you can go ahead and do all kinds of your single link, complete link clustering, or do minimum spanning tree, do min cuts, whatever it is, uh, and uh, you can do your clustering. 
So that is the power of the graph modeling. Uh, in fact, uh, so much so that uh, when uh, nowadays when I think of uh, uh, clustering applications, I almost always think of okay, what is the graph right that I can construct out of the data and once I construct the graph and then feed it into my favorite clustering algorithm right. So that is that is typically how uh, many people operate right because there are so many powerful uh, clustering algorithms that are based on graphs okay. Good. Any questions on this? So, uh, so computing the distance is order n square right. Yeah. So is it not possible to reduce so the complexity of the entire algorithm will, algorithm will be essentially order n square. Mm -hmm. Is it not possible to reduce it? Most clustering algorithms are way more than order n squared in their operations because if you think about it, right? So, uh, if you use something like k means, right, what is the problem with k means? Every time the centroids change, and I have to redo the computation to the centroids. So, of course, I have k centroids and I have n data points, okay. So, every time the things change, I have to do for every iteration, I have to do nk computation, okay. And the number of iterations can be pretty large. So, so, yeah, so that's 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 a problem, right? But then k-means, in, in if you have, uh, in fact, a fairly large data set, a small number of cluster centroids, k-means is actually not a bad thing. For example, k-medoids, right? Think about the complexity of k-medoids; it's it's humongous, right? Or or PAM, right? So when you do PAM, essentially, you take each, yeah, exactly. So many clustering algorithms are very expensive. So n squared is not too bad right uh, but of course if you have a cheaper way of if you have a way of getting around computing the n square distances great yeah if you have a better way of comp computing that's great so what uh, typically yeah i mean there are ways of doing that okay but uh, uh, it involves using very clever data structures and and trying to uh, you know reduce the amount of computation that you do right uh, by doing some cheap computations and then trying to do more expensive computations and so on and so forth. But depending on the size of the depending on the volume of data that you are handling right and uh, the amount of resources that is available to you and so on and so forth you might want to choose something over the other. It turns out that the overhead in doing this n squared computation is lot lesser than in some of those techniques which try to avoid the n squared computation right. So one of the things which you guys should realize is big O notation is very deceptive, right. Suppose you have 10 elements in an array, what is the best way to sort them? Okay. Likewise, so there might be instances where even though it looks n squared, it might be cheaper to do that rather than try to set up something that is more clever, okay. So that that is a thing you will have to think about. But clustering is inherently an expensive operation, there is no way around it. Uh, 